Amen. Our focal text is in the book of Colossians. First Colossians 24, 27. While you turn there, I'm going to go ahead and pray, and then we are going to begin. Father God, truly you're great and greatly to be praised, God. We just adore you, and we just honor you, and we just magnify you, and we just extol you, and we just we just we just feast upon your presence today, God. Lord, we ask you right now, if there's anything unlike you in our lives, Father God, expose it, reveal it, and remove it, God. Forgive us for sin of omission, commission, or poor disposition. Any bad attitude, hallelujah, any bad, hallelujah, decisions, God, any any bad thoughts, Father God, any anything in our heart that we've just been struggling to release, Father God, work on us, Father God, fix us, God, hallelujah, convict us of the things and the areas that we need change so that we can grow, and most importantly, so that we won't become stagnant and unable to move forward in you, Father God. Well, Lord, we just ask you in the name of Jesus to have your way in this place, God, hallelujah, that you speak to our hearts, that you speak to our minds, Father God, for those who are in this place and those who are watching or will see this on a later date, Lord Jesus, that you just allow this message of deliverance, Father God, this message of hope, hallelujah, to seep into the pores of their essence in the name of Jesus and be come, hallelujah, intertwined with their character, Lord, so that they can have that very essential spiritual nutrient necessary to succeed, thrive, and conquer in your kingdom, Lord Jesus. We ask you right now that you open our eyes so that we can behold the wondrous things within your law, open our ears so that we can hear what the Spirit of God is saying, and open our hearts so that the seed of the word that comes forth today finds good ground, takes root, grows, hallelujah, and becomes fruit unto righteousness that those who partake of it will be nourished and glory of God will be produced in their lives. Now, now, hide me behind the cross and speak through lips of clay. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. These things we pray in the matchless name of our Lord, Savior, Redeemer, Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 I know I told you that the focal scripture is Colossians 1, and we'll be looking at verses 24 through 27, and I will give you the theme of the sermon now because if I don't do it now, you won't catch it when I actually get around to talking about it in the message. But if you had to wrap your mind around one specific topic for today's message, it would be the power of eternal hope. The power of eternal hope. The power of eternal hope. Man, life, life can be crazy sometimes. Life can, if you don't pay attention, get away from you. <laughs> and so often with some people, because they're not paying attention, life can just totally and completely pass them by. You, we, us, have dreams when we start out, goals, aspirations, hope, and a lot of those times those things can just get away from us because of life. Life can be a mystery and none of us can be certain what the outcome of life will be, right? You can plan you can prepare, you can practice, and you can pray. But there will always be a shroud of uncertainty surrounding the final results of all that praying, of all that preparation, of all of that practice. We don't know how or we don't know what the end is truly going to be. Life can be a mystery. No matter how smart you are, no matter how wise you are, no matter how talented you are, no matter how much experience you are or you have, your insight into the future is limited, right? That works in a multitude of ways. Like just the way that our insight into our life is limited concerning our dreams, our insight is equally limited 
concerning our fears. When we have fears, sometimes they overwhelm us mm -hmm. and they overtake us and they cause us to be stagnant. And a lot of times when you face your fears, it ain't even close to as bad as you magnified it to be in your imagination. Nazir has a fear of dogs. There was a time when a small puppy, one of them pocket puppies would walk by. Nazir would run inside the church. He did not want to be around it. But one time a dog came and I said, son, you got to face your fears. And he stood there. The dog just walked on by and paid Nazir, no, never mind. And he said, I faced my fears. He faced his fears. And it wasn't as bad as he thought it was, was it? Yeah. No, it wasn't. Anyway, <laughs> he's not going to help me today. But life and our fears and our insights are limited. First Corinthians, you can turn there. I know that's not the focal passage, but First Corinthians gives us a little bit of insight to this dynamic. First Corinthians 13, verse 10 through 12. 1 Corinthians 13, verse 10 through 12. And I'm reading the New King James Version, and it reads, But when that which is perfect has come, then that which in part will be done away with. And y'all know the next verse. When I was a child, I spoke as a child, I understood as a child, I thought as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. Then verse 12. For now, we see in a mirror dimly, but then face to face, I know I now I know in part, but then I shall know just as I am known. Verse 10 and verse 14 are always overlooked when people read this. Everyone always just focuses on verse 11. When I was a child, I spoke as a child, I understood as a child, I thought as a child, but when I became a man, I put away childish things. You heard that a thousand times, haven't you? We focus on verse 11, but look at verse 10. But when that which is perfect has come. That's important. The scripture says, when that which is perfect has come, then that which is in part will be done away with. Y'all with me so far? I don't want to lose y'all. Those words are important for us to embrace because they inform us that apart or without he who is perfect, we are incomplete in every way. Let me make sure I read it right. But when that which is perfect has come, then that which is in part, that means that which is fragmented or that which is incomplete, right, mm -hmm. will be done away with. So when that which is in perfect is come, that which is incomplete will be obsolete. When that which is perfect is come, that which is incomplete will be obsolete. We are incomplete in every way without Christ because we understand that God is perfect right. in every way. Right. It says when that which is perfect has come. So the only thing that is perfect, the only thing that is perfect is God. God is the only one that is perfect. So he is the complete embodiment of all goodness. He is the complete embodiment of all righteousness. He is complete embodiment of all that is true, and he is holy. He is perfect. Our completion comes through our connection and our covenant with Christ. Stick with me. I'm going to get to the point about the power of eternal hope. But you got to understand that our completion comes through our connection and covenant with Christ because he is that which is perfect. Then the 12th verse in 1 Corinthians goes on, in 1 Corinthians 13, goes on to say, for now we see in the mirror dimly, but then when we're connected to perfection, we see face to face. Now I know in part, but then I shall know just as I am known. Those words reflect hmm, the current capabilities of man that we are only capable of seeing ourselves as one looking in the mirror. No filters. No filters. Apart from God, we are, y'all know what a filter is when I say a filter? 
Y'all ever, y'all ever play with the cell phone and they, they and, and you and you touch one of the filters and they put like the the dog ears or the dog. T- have you seen people take those pictures? Also, those are called filters. But apart, we we don't see like through filters when we look in the mirror apart from Christ. We only see what is there. You only see what is there. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm gonna make it plain for you. Um. Apart from Christ, we are incapable of seeing ourselves the way Christ sees us, our options the way God has laid them out for us, our futures or our potential or our purpose or our help. Apart from Christ, we don't look at it like that. When I look at myself in the mirror physically, I see my gray hairs. I see the wrinkles. Thank you, Nazir. He says in my beard. He sees them too. Um, I see my gray hairs. I see my wrinkles in my face. I see my gut in the mirror. I see the new growth in my hair that lets me know I need to get my hair done. I see the calluses on my hand. I see the flaws in my skin. This is what I see with my natural eyes when I look in the mirror. When I look in the mirror. And that's why people wear makeup when they get on TV. Because they want to hide the blemishes. They want to hide what they see. And a lot of times we do that in life. We try to hide what the world sees so that they don't get the same vision of us that we get of ourselves when we look in the mirror. I'm talking about naturally, but when I look at, but, but, but I look at life the only way I can through the only filter that I was equipped with if I am apart from God. I look at it through a natural human filter. And that natural human filter limits my perception. It limits my perspective. Through my natural filter, I see the limitations of my finances. It's all the money I got. So I get paid again. So I get another check. It's all I got to work with. I see the limitations of my health. I see the limitations of my education. I can't go any further without this degree or with that certification or with this credential. I see the limitations of everything through my natural human filter. Y'all know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm trying to talk as plain as possible because I want you to understand that there is power in eternal hope. Right now, I got to. I have to make sure you understand that as long as you're looking at things and approaching life through a natural application, you are going to encounter limitations. And these limitations, at times, will cause you to lose hope on the things that you want to accomplish because the goal we desire to obtain seems greater than our budget seems greater than our ability, seems greater than our understanding or our belief about what we are, about our belief about what we believe we are capable of. Like sometimes we just don't believe we can do it, even though we're being told you can do it. Sometimes we just don't believe that we can do it because we're looking at ourselves through a natural human filter. Our limitations. Our limitations. Where did these limitations come from? Who told you what you could do and what you couldn't do? Who told you what was possible? Who told you what you were capable of? Who put the ceiling on your potential? Who told you what you could or could not achieve. Because Philippians 4.13 declares that through Christ who strengthens us, we can do all things. But we don't always see it that way because we are still stuck using that natural filter. One of my mentors, there's an application called Marco Polo. And Marco Polo lets you 
take a video and while you're making a video, the person you're sending the polo to can be watching it as you're making it. And then when your video is done, then they can respond with a video. So if you want to leave people video messages, you know, throughout the day, just so they'll get it and see you and talk to you and they'll talk back as Marco Polo. Anyway, one of my mentors, he's older than me, he was using um, Marco Polo to send me a message. And every time he sent me a message, he was black and white. He had accidentally turned on the black and white filter and didn't know how to turn it off. So he was stuck using that filter. And I had to actually send him a polo telling him and showing him how to turn the filter off. And it's interesting because if he had not been connected with someone who was familiar with the application, he would have been stuck using that old filter. He would have been stuck using that old filter, but because he was connected yeah, to right. someone who recognized, number one, that he was using the wrong filter right. and could show him how to switch to the right filter, right. he was blessed and benefited. And the very next um, polo he sent me, he was using all the filters. Right. He was using the cartoon filter. He was using the nighttime filter. He was using all the filters, uh -huh. except for the pretty filter. We don't play that. We don't use the beauty filter. We save that for the ladies. Yes. But hey, that was a joke. Y'all can laugh if y'all want. But, um, <laughs> but it's important to understand that we as people were born using the wrong filter. And there is another filter that God requires us to use if we expect to be the people of the kingdom that he designed us and created us to be. It is critical that we no longer process or analyze our lives through a filter that accommodates the sin factor. Listen, a natural filter accommodates a sin factor. It accommodates a doubt factor. It accommodates a shame factor. It accommodates a guilt factor. It accommodates for the past mistake factor. It allows us to make excuses where God has removed them all. Mm. To truly give yourself a realistic opportunity to experience the true divine power of God in your life, you must process your life through the eternal hope of Jesus Christ. You have to process your life. Listen, you can't process your life through shame. You can't process your life through guilt. You can't allow your life to be processed through other people manipulating you. You can't process your life through the past transgressions. You can't process your life because of the covering of your skin. You can't process your life through the gender that you were born. You can't process your life because of the family that you were born in. You can't process your life because of the disability that you were born in. The only way that you are going to be what God has called you to be is to process your life through the eternal hope of Jesus Christ. There's power in the eternal hope of Jesus Christ. Hope is a topic that we can never, ever teach enough on. I, I know Jesse Jackson said, keep hope alive. Let me tell you something about that. Hey, well, let, me, let me tell you something about that. And I ain't, I ain't hating on Jesse. I don't want you to take this the wrong way. But listen, somebody on life support is alive. Yeah. We got to we, we got to do more than keep hope alive. You got to keep hope active. Yeah. You got to you have, you have to have a hope that is blossoming, not just not on a ventilator, not not on life support. No, no, we we need to do more than keep hope alive. We we, we have to make sure that our hope is active, that our hope is thriving, that our hope is engaging every part of our lives because life. The challenges of life, the challenges of society, time, Satan, the devil are always trying to get us to lose our hope. Right. Everything in this world is trying to strip you of your hope, strip you of your dream, strip you of your possibilities, strip you of the thoughts of your imagination. And that is why it is important that our hope is actively engaged and not just hope through a natural filter, but a hope that is that is anchored in the eternal God, hope. Because this world is trying to make you lose hope. You walk out on the streets, mm -hmm. you look around at the magnitude of negativity and sin, and it is very easy to say this world is hopeless. Hope. What is hope? 
The definition of hope is the feeling that is what that what is wanted can be had, or that events will turn out for the best. Have you ever used? Hold on, let me read that again. Hope is defined as the feeling that what is wanted can be had or that events will turn out for the best. Think about that. Have you ever used hope in a negative way? I think yes. I, I know, but even when you used it that way, the outcome was beneficial for you. Like even if it was like like God forbid, God forbid you said you hope somebody croaks. God forbid you said that. But the reality is that's your hope. And then croaking will benefit you. Right. Hope, hope, hope means it will turn out the best for you. Hope is a, and, and listen, that, that, that's a thought right there. So your hope is predicated on what the results you want to happen. Nobody be like walking out of the house, like I hope I break my neck. Nobody hopes like that. I hope I lose all my money at the casino. I hope they turn my life. That's not how hope works. When you hope, you always, they say, we hope for the best, but we prepare for the worst. Right. That's a saying. But you always hope. So that's what hope is defined. You got to understand what hope is. Hope is defined as a feeling that what is wanted can be had, or the events will turn out good. And oftentimes, events have turned out so poorly, right. so opposite of what we hope. Oh. That as soon as something goes slightly wrong in a new endeavor, we lose and give up all hope. Because you had that one situation that you were all into and it turned out bad. So the next time you try something, it don't you don't even give it the same effort, the same investment, you don't give it the same chance. As soon as it slightly goes bad, you just lose all hope and give up. You just give up all hope and try to give up. It happens all the time. Listen, in a relationship, as soon as somebody doesn't respond back to that text in the next three minutes, oh, right. you start thinking the worst. Yep. They don't like me. They're with somebody else. They don't care. Yeah. All men are the same. All women are the same. All because you have no hope or you place the hope in the wrong, wrong thing. You're looking at the hope through the wrong filter. As soon as a cloud shows up on the horizon, oh, it's going to be a storm. I'm not going. Yesterday it was supposed to be a thunderstorm all day, and it was cloudy all day. It couldn't rain to save its life yesterday. It was just sprinkled here, sprinkled there. I was out in it. Trust me when I tell. And, and people were all over the city were upset because it was like it was supposed to rain, but nothing happened. We were canceling plans and everything, and and and, and, and it never rained. But the slightest sign of something negative made them lose hope. Oh. This is my favorite one. As soon as the pastor calls you into the office, <laughs> you think it's going to be bad. Yep. You ain't got no hope whatsoever that this is going to end well. Yep. No hope at all. Because apparently one time you got pulled into the pastor's office and it didn't end well. So now you have that experience and that memory so you automatically ex attach your expectations for the future from what you experienced in the past hope all messed up but what that really is is that's filtering your expectations through the flesh when you spirit when, when you filter watch this watch this because we teach you when you filter your expectations through the flesh, you experience anxiety, you experience depression, yep. you experience fear, and you experience doubt. When you filter your expectation through your flesh, yep. through your carnal mind, right. through your natural limited understanding, when you filter your expectations that way, you experience anxiety, depression, fear, and doubt. Think about it. When you're having an emotional breakdown, your flesh is all in it. When do you put God 
in the equation when you're in depression? When do you put God in the equation when you're in doubt? When do you put God in the equation when you're having an anxiety or panic attack? Where is God? Yeah. Where is God in your thought process? He ain't. He's not there, right? He ain't. Because you're filtering it through the flesh. I'm trying to help somebody today. I'm trying to help somebody today. We have lost hope in everything because we have placed our hopes in everything except the one thing that consistently exceeds our expectations for positive outcome. I can say that again. We have lost hope in everything because we placed our hopes in everything except the one thing that consistently exceeds our expectations for a positive outcome. I love Pastor Janelle. Everybody knows it. But occasionally, she lets me down. And usually she knows it, and she'll say, I'm doing it right now. <laughs> She's laughing back there. She knows what it is. She's like, I'm, I'm not even looking at her. She's like, I'm doing it right now. She, 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 she doesn't meet my expectation, but, but, but I love her. It doesn't, it, doesn't, it doesn't change how I feel about her. But the reality is, she has the capacity to miss it sometimes. People have the ability not to meet our expectations sometimes. But and, 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 and we get hurt and we get damaged and we get broken in the process because we keep giving them the opportunity time and time and time again to fail and not meet our expectations. And we don't give God the same privilege to exceed our expectation. Let's look at this focal text. I think y'all I think y'all with me. Trying to help somebody. Now, you can highlight this in your Bible. Um, and you ain't gonna be able to really get it like we need to get it because there's so many Greek, I'm sorry, no, Greek translations that we would have to pull to get you to really understand it at our level. So, up on the monitor, I want you to look at the Passion Translation for our focal text. It's the Passion Translation for our focal text. Listen to this. I can even celebrate the sorrows. Hmm, that's a mouthful right there. I can even celebrate the sorrows I have experienced on your behalf. For as I join with you in difficulties, it helps you to discover what lacks in your understanding of the sufferings. Jesus experienced for his body, the church. This is the very reason I've been made a minister by the authority of God and his servant to his body so that in his detailed plan, I would fully equip you with the word of God. There is a divine mystery, a secret surprise that has been concealed from the world for generations, but now it's being revealed, unfolded and manifested for every holy believer to experience. You ready? Living within you is the Christ who floods you with the expectation of glory. And I'll read that again. Living, living within you is the Christ who floods you with the expectation of glory. This mystery of Christ embedded within us becomes a heavenly treasure chest of hope filled with riches of glory for his people, and God wants everyone to know it. This focal passage in the passage translation, the Apostle Paul is revealing the mystery and the value of placing and maintaining hope in Christ. He's telling us you have to place and maintain hope in Christ. Plain and simply put, there will be glory after this. There will be glory after this. He starts it off by talking about sorrows, but he ends it talking about even though it's going to be some tough times, even though it's going to be some negative situations, even though it's going to be some hardship, there will be glory yes. after this. Paul even goes on to say he can celebrate because his hope is in Christ, reminds him that his glory, Christ's glory, will be revealed even in the present struggle. See, we don't look at struggle that way. 
But you gotta look at struggle that way when you're connected to Christ. Because if you're connected to Christ, then the struggle is connected to Christ. You gotta see it that way. You're not alone in the battle. You're not alone in the sickness. You're not alone in the disease. It's all, if you're connected to Christ, God is there with you in the storm. God is there with you in the battle. God is there with you in the hardship. God is there with you in it all. When our hope is placed in Christ, when our expectation is for God's will to be accomplished by what he allows, when our understanding of trials, tests, tribulations, hardships, challenges becomes about kingdom business and not about our personal endeavors, our perceptions of what we are experiencing and how we respond to those things will change because our hope will be in Christ and Christ is limitless. Hope in Christ shifts your expectations to another level. Yes, sir. In Christ, things don't break down. They work out in our favor. In Christ, things don't break even. They work out in our favor. In Christ, we don't just survive the battle. Prisoners of war survive the battle. But in Christ, we don't just survive the battle. In Christ, we triumph. In Christ, we get victory. In Christ, we are more than conquerors. In Christ, we don't just get by. In Christ, we have abundance. In Christ, we have overflow. In Christ, we don't have to limit ourselves to medical treatment or being stuck on drugs. In Christ, we can be healed. Yes. In Christ, we don't have to stay in bondage of any type. We don't have to be bound by poverty. We don't have to be bound by addiction. We don't have to be bound by generational curses. We can be free from condemnation. We can be free from all of those things because when the sun sets free, it's free indeed. Amen, amen, amen. The reason your hope is missing is because it's missing Christ. Mm. Wow. The reason why your hope is missing, why your hope is fading, why you're losing hope, why you're giving up hope is because you have a hope that is not anchored in Jesus. A situation absent of Christ is a hopeless situation. A purpose absent of Christ is a hopeless purpose. A world absent of Christ is a hopeless world. A life absent of Christ is a hopeless life. Today, God wants to remind you that there is power in the eternal hope of Christ. Listen, if you never had Christ to place your hope in him, do it today. Yes. If you never had Christ to place your hope in, do it today. If you have Christ but fail to totally place your hope in him, do it today. Do it today. Listen, everything in creation, everything in creation, everything in creation has an expiration date. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> everything in creation has an expiration date. Mountains erode. <laughs> Streams and rivers dry up. <laughs> everything, everything in creation, stars die. Stars die? Everything what? in creation has an expiration date. But because God, watch this, was not created. <laughs> Listen, to, listen, 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 because God was not created, because God subsists, he, he, he is here all by himself because he just is, because he always has been and always will be, there is no expiration date to him, there is nothing about him that is limited, his power has no limits, his Wisdom has no limits. His provision has no limits. His mercy has no limits. His joy has no limits. His peace has no limits. His reach has no limits. His imagination has no limits. His grace has no limits. His love has no limits. And because God has no limits, our hope in him should have no limits. Replace doubt with hope in Christ and take the limits off. Replace depression with hope in Christ and take the limits off. Replace fear with hope in Christ and take the limits off. Replace the memory of past failures with hope in Christ and take the limits off. Replace negative opinions with hope in Christ and take the limits off. Every obstacle 
that tries to discourage you and cause you to question your faith, replace it with hope in Christ and take the limits off. Yes. This life is only a vapor. But Christ is from everlasting to everlasting. Hope in him will outlast all opposition. Hope in him will outlast all competition. Hope in him will out outlast all. Yeah. All allegations. All lies. All schemes of the enemy. All weapons that are formed against you. Hope in Christ triumphs over them all. Hope in Christ will triumph over them all. And cause his glory to be revealed through us in due season. You don't have to allow hardships to have you when you have hope. You don't have to hold on to hate when you can hold on to hope. You don't have to house hurt in your heart when you can house hope in your heart instead. With hope you can be whole. With hope you can be healed. With hope you can be happy. Yeah. <laughs> there is power in the eternal hope of Christ. There's power in the eternal hope of Christ. There's power in the eternal hope of Christ. Stop placing your hope in things that have expiration dates. Mm. I love the Titans. You like the Titans? I love everyone. There's a part of the United Church's fellowship. But I'm so glad that my hope is in God. And they come through for me. They come through for me. The Titans come through when we do outreach and the Titans come through when we feed the people, they come through. And, and United Churches, they come through with donations and they come through with resources. But I am so glad that if they never came through, <laughs> yeah, I got hope. <laughs> my hope don't change. I'm so glad that if the Titans get sick and they're under the weather or they just can't be there like they want to be in their heart, whichever way they want to be. I'm so glad that if Bishop can't be by my side because he has another assignment that is pressing him that he has agreed to, to cover. I'm so grateful that it doesn't change that I have hope in Christ. Yes. And that hope has got to be unwavering because God doesn't change. So my hope in them should never change. you got to have hope in Christ. I pray y'all get this today. Yes. I pray y'all get this today. Don't place this, no longer place your hope in people. That includes me. Listen, 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 listen. I understand. I appreciate y'all love me and y'all y'all think I'm dependable and y'all can count on me. But I'm going to tell you, one of these days, if uh, unless Jesus comes to take me back with him, the worms will eat of this body. And you will have to find something else to put your hope in. Mm. Hallelujah. You got the, so you might as well start practicing now. Hey, you might as well get it together now. Put your hope in God. Listen, put your hope. I, 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 I hate to see the day when I can't depend on some of the people that I depend on because they're no longer here. But it's a reality. It's a reality. But I know as long as I breathe. As long as blood is pumping through my veins, as long as there is life in this vessel, I can depend and I can hope on my God, my Lord, my Savior, my Redeemer, the Christ Jesus. Amen? Amen. Amen.